everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you are joining me today. We are going to hang out in the studio and do a little playing with paint today. Pa uh, painting is my all-time favorite craft or art or, you know, what we, we do a lot of DIYs here and I guess art is probably my most, it, it's not probably, it is my absolute most favorite craft that I do. I enjoy painting. It just brings me a lot of joy and it's also, it's just very therapeutic. There's something so just peaceful and relaxing about painting and, and I just, I get in my, I just get in my zone and kind of get out of my head and just, I don't know, I guess it's very zen for a lack of a better word right now. <laughs> So that's what we're going to be doing today, and um, before we jump into it, I thought I would just show you guys a little bit of my setup. This is where I work. I have this amazing drafting table in my studio, and it's not always flat like this. A lot of times I have it, you know, up vertical, and it's pushed all the way against the wall, which is why this wall behind me looks kind of bare and plain. But we're going to fix that today. I want to hang a, I want to create a couple pieces of art to hang up over here and maybe even something right here. I'm not sure. You guys might have to help me on that one. And then I have a, a couple other walls in the studio that just need a little sprucing up and just need some life. And so we're just going to create some art today that I can hang around the studio and just enjoy every time I'm in here working. So with that said, let's jump on into our projects today and get started painting. While working on our first painting, I'd first like to go over the supplies I use, some supply recommendations, and a few tips and tricks. So I'll very likely be rambling a lot. I could talk for hours and hours about art supplies, but I won't do that to you today. I first just want to clarify that I am not a professional artist and have had no formal training. I am self-taught and absolutely certain that there is still so much I can learn. So today, I'll just be sharing with you what I do know and what works well for me. My first advice, if you are new to watercolor, please don't go out and spend a fortune on a bunch of fancy supplies. I say this because if you end up not liking it, then you will have wasted a whole bunch of money. I'll be honest, art can be a very expensive hobby, so you want to make sure you are going to really enjoy this craft before investing in expensive supplies. When I first started painting, I used the least expens expensive supplies I could find. It wasn't until I knew that I was going to love this craft that I began really investing in my um, supplies, especially brushes and paper. There is definitely something to be said about good quality brushes and good quality paper. So I recommend just buying yourself one or two good brushes a month until you have a decent collection. And if you're like me, that's never really complete. I do have some favorite brushes that are really good quality and very affordable. The ones I am using today are from Craftimo. I am not sponsored by any of the brands I talk about today. They are just some of my favorites. So I purchased these Craftimo bamboo brushes in a 15 piece set for under $50. I really like these brushes for many reasons. They are made from sustainable materials and have synthetic bristles, not animal hair. And I really love the shorter snappy bristles, bristles. but brushes are a very personal thing. So you have to just experiment with a few and then find what works for you and what you love the, the best. My other favorite is the Princeton snap brushes and they are a bit more spendy, but still affordable in my opinion. Okay, now let's talk paper. My advice is to invest in quality paper before investing in quality brushes. Your paper can be your best friend and you will benefit the most from good paper. Good paper maximizes the effects of watercolor, allowing you to achieve amazing results in your paintings. I highly suggest you use 100% cotton paper. Cellulose paper just won't take the paint the same as cotton and you will likely end up very frustrated. 
My favorite everyday paper is from Etcher Lab. It's the paper I use when I am practicing or just playing around with ideas. I feel like this paper is great quality and very affordable. B watercolor paper is also an inexpensive paper for all your practice projects. As for the more expensive papers, I really love Paul Rubens and Rembrandt. And of course, Arches is my absolute favorite paper, but it is also one of the most expensive. Because it is so expensive, I only use my Arches paper when I'm doing a commissioned piece or when I want to frame my art for home decor. And I will list my favorite papers in the description box down below for y'all. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you right now, but I do feel like this is good info to have if you are just starting out. There is so much to choose from and hopefully I can save you a few headaches by sharing some of what I've learned over the years. Okay, back to paper. There are two types of watercolor paper. There is cold pressed and hot pressed. The main difference between the two is cold pressed is a textured paper and absorbs paints really well. Hot pressed is a smooth paper and can be a little harder to work with as the paint tends to stay on top of the paper making blending harder and you won't be able to get good watercolor color blooms either. Uh, but that is for a whole different video. I warned you I could go on and on for hours about art supplies. <laughs> so let's move on to the actual paint itself. My go-to is Winsor & Newton Cotman Series watercolors. I love these paints and almost exclusively use this brand. They are extremely affordable and good quality for the price. I also really love Daniel Smith, but they are a bit more costly. And I also recommend keeping your palette to a limited amount of colors. I have less than 15 pigments in my palette because by blending paints, you can actually mix a hundred different colors from those original 15. I recommend investing in the seven primary colors with a few additional pigments and I will list the colors in my palette down below for you. I also recommend getting yourself a color wheel and spending a little time getting to know and understanding color theory. This will really be helpful when mixing colors and don't be afraid to play around with your colors and experiment with color mixing. It is a lot of fun and not as intimidating as intimidating as it may seem at first. There are some amazing YouTube tutorials out there that explain color theory and color mixing really well. I will list some of my favorite YouTube artists in the description box below for you as well. Okay, I am done rambling on about supplies. And now that we are all warmed up, we can move on to creating a bigger, more detailed piece of art. For this project, we are going to paint a loose, impressionistic watercolor piece. This is a great technique for beginners. And I'll start by sketching my drawing onto my paper with a graphite pencil. It's there, but it is hard to see on camera. And we will be using the wet on wet method for most of this painting. This simply means I will wet my entire canvas with clean water before adding pigment to my paper. You want to be sure and brush the clean water evenly over your surface. You don't want any pools of water forming as this will create some not so attractive blooms. Once I have the entire surface evenly coated with water, I will begin laying in some color. And I'm not trying to be super precise here. This is a loose painting. Just enjoy the process, have fun with it, and let the paint work its magic.
Now that we are finished with our sky, we can start working on the boat. And for this section, I am painting wet on dry. This will give me a little more control and help with precision. The boat will be the main focal point, so I do want it to have a smidge more detail and not be quite as loose as its surroundings. Once I have the boat outlined, I will work on the shoreline and the water. And again, just enjoy this process and experiment with letting your paint flow. When working with watercolor, it is best to start with very light layers of colors first. Watercolor is a transparent medium, so you can darken your painting, but you can't lighten it. So just use small, very light layers in the beginning. And try to practice water control here as well. My best advice for water control is practice, practice, practice. Most of my paintings will have anywhere from three to 20 layers. It really depends on the piece and the effect you are going for. Loose watercolor is the easiest and it usually only requires two to three layers. And you do want to make sure that each layer is completely dry before adding additional layers. Also keep in mind that every painting does go through an ugly stage, so don't give up. Always see your painting through to the end. When you first start out with art of any kind, I recommend using a reference photo and really study it to see where all the high and low lights are, paying close attention to shadows and shading, as well as detail. This will help you when you go to set brush to paper.
We will also be using some white gouache in this painting to add highlights and waves to our water. Gouache is an acrylic meets watercolor medium. You can also use this with water and it is a bit more opaque so works really well to create certain effects in a watercolor painting. Here I'm just adding another layer of paint to deepen the shadows and any details in our painting. And remember to let each layer dry completely before adding more layers. I will also add the colors that I used in this painting down below in the description box for you in case you want to use the same color palette. When I add extra paint to the painting, I usually do do a pretty good blending and I just blend by taking off some wa the water off of my brush and then just gently smoothing the paint into the other paint colors, kind of like you're getting a gradient almost. Like you'll see here, I have a pretty harsh line right there. So I'm just gonna take a very damp brush and just kind of begin blending it out until it moves into the rest of the painting and just all kind of becomes one together. Now we'll add some white gouache to any areas on our painting where we want to enhance the water or add waves. And gouache also works well to add glimmering sunlight reflections in your water. Remember, it is an opaque, opaque medium. So it works very well for your final touches on a watercolor painting.
Depending on how dark the layers are in your original watercolor, you may have to apply one or two, one to, one, oh my goodness, one to three coats of the gouache. Just be patient and have fun and see what emerges on the paper. Now we'll remove the tape and voila, our painting is finished. And don't forget to sign your work. Two more paintings for the gallery wall. Yay, I'm so excited. Okay, y'all, so I thought it would be fun to just do a quick little tour of my studio. So as you can see here, this is my computer area where I do no, a good portion of my work for the day. And that's the gallery wall that I've been working on. I, I still want to add one more piece to the very, very bottom of this. And we'll work on that in our next video because this is a two part video. So next week we will also be creating some, um, a couple more pieces of art. We'll do one more watercolor and then we'll do some acrylic painting as well. And that desk in front of the window, I apologize for the lighting, it's not very good right now, is my little writing desk where I just sit to do my planning and, and whatnot. And then I have this shelving unit over here. And I do try to be very intentional with my exposed shelving. I make them decorative, but also very functional. And I actually use most of the items I have displayed here. And this is my drafting table area where I do all of my crafting. This is the place in my studio where I spend the majority of my time. And I do, so the, the, the acrylic painting that we're gonna work on next week is gonna be for that big, ugly, empty wall over there between my um, uh, shelf, the, sh the big, tall shelving unit, and then above, like above that typewriter is where I kinda wanna um, add another piece of art, just to kinda spruce up that corner because it looks a little boring. And here we have my sewing corner, and I love this little corner. I really love my shelving above the sewing machine, but that wall next to it just needs a little TLC, and I do have some good ideas for that wall that we can work on together next week. And then I almost didn't want to show you all this because it's a little embarrassing, but this is my craft closet where I keep the majority of my supplies that, you know, I, that I just don't have room in the, out in my main studio. But this is, this is where I keep like my fabrics and my paints and my cutter, the printer. I would love to have electricity in this closet so that I could keep that stuff in there and, and actually make it more functional, but that'll probably never happen. So anyway, that's my craft closet. <laughs> it's a little messy, but as organized as I can possibly keep it. <laughs> So that's my studio and I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I did. I really loved working with y'all today and spending time together and I look forward to seeing you again next week as we complete our studio makeover. Thanks for watching guys. See you next week. Bye.